happy Friday. A circle is inscribed in a quadrilateral whose four angles have measures 85, 76, 94, and 105. Find the measure of the four arcs between the consecutive points of tangency. So it wants us to find the measure of, I'll call them A, B, C, and arc D. So go ahead and think about that if you haven't already. Did y'all have time to think about it yet? We're going to go off on a tangent right now, and I'm going to show you something I haven't shown you before. This is just a shortcut. You don't have to memorize this, but I want to show you something kind of cool. When we have a circle, that one wasn't one of my best efforts, with two tangent lines, and we want to find this missing angle. If I tell you that this arc is, um, let's go with 72. If I tell you that that arc is 72, I want you to find that angle. Go. So what would you do first? You would do 360 minus 72, right? Because you need to find that missing arc. Two eighty-eight. But then what would you be doing with that? You would be doing whatever you get there, you'd be doing this arc minus seventy-two divided by two, right? Because you subtract the arcs and divide by two. Do you agree that if I call this A and B, this is arc A and this is arc B? Do you see what I'm saying? So, what do you get when you simplify that? We, let's, let's divide both of these things by 2. 360 divided by 2 is 180. This is 72 minus 72. So, I mean, this is really just 360 minus 144 divided by 2. So the 360 divided by 2 is 180, and the 144 divided by 2 is 72. What you'll notice, and I don't think I'm explaining this very well, what you'll notice is that when you're given a situation like this, this angle, x, is always just going to be 180 minus that arc right there. What I'm saying is that there's a shortcut. When it's two tangents, not when it's a tangent and a secant, but when it's two tangents like this, it's always going to be 180 minus this arc right here. It's just a shortcut. You don't have to use it, but I think about on the warm-up, I think on the warm-up you have to use it. Yes, we already found, learned how to find the measure of that angle, Quan. To find this angle, you subtract the arcs and divide by 2. But what I'm telling you is that because this one is always 360 minus B, is that I can make this formula more simple. So this is saying, this is like saying 360 minus 2B over 2. That's the measure of the angle. Well, if I divide both of these by 2, I get 180 minus B equals my angle. So I'm telling you that there's a shortcut. This is just, this isn't going to come up that often. This is a K-level problem, so I'm showing you how to use these tools. So now if we go back to the warm-up, if I sh told you that this arc is really just 180 minus this arc is 94, then you're right, that warm-up just got really simple. Okay? So what's the measure of arc C? 180 minus 94, so C is 86, and we could do that for the remaining ones. Can we use the shortcut every time? Absolutely, Taher. When can you use the shortcut? You can only use the shortcut when you have a circle with two tangent lines, the ice cream cone situation, the snow cone. That's the only time. Don't try to use that shortcut if your picture looks like this. 
you would not be able to use the shortcut on that second picture. You can only use it when you're using the whole circle, pretty much is what I'm saying. The party theorem, ice cream and snow cone. So do I need to go over all of these? Now we know that to get these arcs, we're just doing 180 minus that angle, and it's kind of a shortcut. Okay, so um, I gave you a little time to look at the homework answers. Um, I hope that you have some that you want to ask me about so I can solve some of these. 15, okay. 11 and 15. Starting with number 9. On number 9, it says that A, B is 9. B, P is 10. P, D is 18. Find C, D. So, since our, our chords are technically our secants, since we're going outside the circle, we're going to use the second formula we learned yesterday. I nicknamed it the wee wee formula. <laughs> whole times external equals whole times external. Okay? So, what is the whole? It is 19. What's the external? It's 10. Equals whole 18 times external. Now, here's where you have two choices. You can name the external 18 minus x, or you can just name the external a separate letter. You can just name it a different letter, and then later, just remember to subtract it from 18. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm going to name it 18 minus x, but if you want to name it a, but then remember to subtract a from 18 in the end, then you're welcome to do that. Okay, so we are doing 190 equals 18 times 18 minus x. I'm not even going to distribute that 18. I'm just going to divide both sides by 18. 190 divided by 18 is an ugly fraction. 95 ninths equals 18 minus x. And then we just subtract it from 18. So I'm going to do 18 minus... 95 ninths. I'm going to let my calculator do all the hard work. I get an ugly decimal. I press math, enter, enter, and we get 67 ninths. So, yes, the answer was ugly, but no, you don't have to do any of the math by hand because you have a calculator. Next one, number 11. Same picture. BD is 18, AC is 14, and CQ is 5. Find BQ. Okay, now we are all inside the circle here. Nothing goes outside the circle. So we're not using the wee wee formula, we're using the PP formula. <laughs> Sorry for all the kindergarten potty words. But we're using the part times part equals part times part. We want the pieces of the chord. We are not using a whole chord at all. Don't use a whole chord. So we need to find the missing pieces. This one would be, what, 14 minus 5, right? Because AC is 14 and CQ is 5. So this one is 9. So, so far I've got 9 times 5 equals, this part is X. What's this part? Well, it's 18 minus X. That looks familiar. Or you could just call it a different letter if you want. But um, this one you pretty much have to call it 18 minus X. 18 minus X times X. This is the part. This is DQ. DQ. And this is the other part. It's BQ. I can already tell that this is going to be a factoring problem because we're going to have X times X. So we have 45 equals 18X minus X squared. We need to move everything to one side of the equation. So I'm going to work up here. I'm going to move everything over this way. X squared minus 18X plus 45 equals 0. Um, then we factor the problem, and we get two answers. Minus 3 minus 15. So our answers are 3 and 15. 
Those are the answers for x. Oh, I named bqx, so those are the answers. Since I named the, what we were looking for, we named it x. So that's why that one has two answers. Okay? Number 15 has three, nope, just two variables. It has two variables. So we are not going to be able to solve for w yet. We're going to solve for x first. And the segments that we're going to use to solve for x are, is, we're going to use this segment, and we're going to use this segment, stopping here. So these are the two segments we're going to use. We're going to solve for x, and we are not going to need a system of equations. Just because there's two variables doesn't mean we need a system. Okay, so here we go. Um, this one we haven't used yet in today's recorded lesson. This one is the tangent squared equals whole times external. That's the third one we learned yesterday. So this one is tangent squared equals whole, whole times external. The 6 is the external. 64 equals... Once again, I'm not going to distribute. You're welcome to distribute if you like to do that. I'm just going to do 64 divided by 6, and then I'm going to subtract 6. You're going to get a decimal again. 64 is not divisible by 6. So when I divided by 6 and then added 6, I got x is 14 thirds, and that is okay. It is not okay to write 4.7 or 4.67. That is not okay. All right, so now we know x. We know it. We're going to use it. x is 14 thirds. And now I'm going to erase this work. And we're going to find w. Come on. Okay. For w, we're going to use the red segments, this one and this one. Whole times external equals whole times external. Now, the whole is a little bit tricky. I have to do 14 thirds plus 5. Math, enter, enter. This whole is 29 thirds. Okay, so whole times external equals whole times external. I am doing the rest of this in my calculator, nothing by hand. So, 29 thirds times 5, enter, then I'm going to do divided by 4, divided by 4, enter, then I'm going to do minus 4, I'm doing the opposite of what's being done to y, minus 4, enter, then I'm going to do math, enter, enter, and we get 97 twelfths, probably the ugliest answer we've had in a while. Both X and W were both fractions. Yes, it didn't turn out pretty, so no, you didn't do it wrong if you got those. Okay?